Being an indigenous woman from the northeast of India, I have the privilege to set light on the Manipur conflict. Manipur, with a population of 2.8 million, is home to more than 35 communities. One of the main reasons of this conflict is over land rights and controls and ownership of the land between the two communities. For the narrative paddles by international medias have been that the Manipur conflict is of religious nature holds no ground. The central government of India has tried to stop the conflict by resolving issues on both communities peacefully with continuous dialogue. Being an indigenous woman from the northeast of India, I have the privilege to set light on the Manipur conflict and the government of India's farm resolve to bring back peace and normalcy in the region. Manipur, with a population of 2.8 million, is home to more than 35 communities. The majority of them can be classified into three main ethnic groups, the Meitei, the Nagas, and the Kukis. Geographically, the state can be divided into two parts, Infal Valley and the hill areas. The valley accounts for over 11% of the area, but is home to 57% of the total populations, mainly Meitei. The hill areas are dominated by Naga and Kuki tribes and comprise 43% of the state population. The present conflicts needs to be seen through the prism of complex ethnic relationship. One of the main reasons of this conflict is over land rights and controls and ownership of the land between the two communities. Therefore, the narrative paddles by international medias have been that the Manipur conflict is of religious nature holds no ground. The truth is that the conflict cannot be described as religious conflict between the majority Meitei and minority Christian cookies since the Nagas, who are predominantly Christian, are not participants to the conflict, not to mention part of Meitei population also practice Christianity. Thankfully, the central government of India has tried to stop the conflict by resolving issues on both communities peacefully with continuous dialogue. I would back the, con the Honorable Council and audience to see Manipur conflict for what it is. Being a Christian and also from the northeast of India, uh, what I'm trying to bring it here is that the real reason, the cost of the ethnic clash between the two communities. It is very easy to have a propaganda to put like a victim role. And I think the Western media, not only the Western, but also the East are very good at doing that. So what we are here is to say that this has a complex issues. It's not only about religion. Yet religion somehow ended up being one of it, but the cause and the reason of this is between the community group, Meite, which is a majority, occupied into the, the area that they have is 11% of the Meite Valley, the, the, the Infal Valley, which they occupied. So I think as a, commu as a community, as a Meite, if I were a Meite group, and we are almost overpopulated the area. And the whole area of the tribal community, which is also the hill, which is about 90% of the entire Manipur, it belongs to either the Kuki or the Naga tribes. So essentially, both sides, I wanted to expand my territory. But you know, this, I think the original cause of the issue is the British divide and rule policy. Dividing India already from the Pakistan, the East and the West, bringing religion use as, an, as a tool to divide people. I think uh, somehow the post-colonial division is still happening. And unfortunately, with the case of Manipur, it's hard because I would be sided cookie, but I want to be partial here because Kuki are my, my people. But at the same time, the reasons that putting Christian versus Hindu, because not all Meitei are Hindu. Majority are Hindu, but not all of them are Hindu. The same goes for the Kuki. Majority are Christian, but not all of them are Christian. Like myself, I used to have indigenous, uh, my tribe used to worship something else. The British colonized us and uh, missionaries. I'm very thankful that I'm Christian and I'm a progressive Christian. However, a lot of ethnic problem in the Northeast, um, the consequence is the religion, but not the true cause. So I think here it is so important that highlighting the reasons why ethnic between two majority and a minority happen in, in, a, in, in an era that is still happening, we are still suffering the post-colonial, the British divide and rule policy. So I think highlighting that is crucial as an Indian and also highlighting the diversity in the northeast of India. We are all of different tribals, different ethnic group, having a little bit fight between ourselves, but we all stem from the same, um, even especially with the geopolitics on the border between Myanmar and Bangladesh, there's so many tribal area and not not just Western media or someone, vested party cannot just say that, oh, a minority Christian is being killed or prosecuted based on this and that without an actual cause. So I think it is important to highlight the two reasons of what is happening there. My last question to you, do you believe that the Western media or the West do really understand the 
the complexity of the Northeast India? Not at all. Being a native, I can say that they don't. And plus, I think also nowadays, I can also see that um, there is a group of us, in a way, from inside, who wanted to portray the truth uh, in the face to the mainland India, as well as to international media. And I think it is very important that if I were a media or a ground personnel to highlight, to, to have the evidence, they should come and stay not just one day and have a parachute journalism. They should stay longer, observe the people, have both sides, and especially with Manipur, condition because there was internet shutdown and a lot of journalists either from the inside cannot have their uh, their statement cross check i think that is one of the reason as well why we have biased um, media